Hi, so buddies. <laughs> so I've been seeing this beautiful one shoulder runch top on most boutique ready to wear uploads and I thought to recreate it, yeah? So in this video, we'll be learning how to make this um, stylish top and also you can get to make a pant or a short with it to give you a stylish two-piece outfit. So if this is something you're interested in learning, then do well and keep watching. And by the way, my name is Whitney Highway and it's nice having you here and you are highly, highly welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> so let's dive right into, you know, learning how to make this one should I run top. Looking at the inspiration, you can see that a stretchy fabric was used for making this particular top, a very stretchy one. So ideally, you know, to use a stretchy fabric for making this top, but I could not get that um, particular stretchy fabric. I could never get any stretchy fabric. So I had to make do with what I have. So here I have the crepe material and it's about one and a half yard and it is not stretchy. So please, when you're making this particular top, try to get a stretchy fabric. That is the ideal fabric for making this top. Yeah. And I do not know the name of that fabric of this um, fabric on this ration. But when you get to the market, just show them the picture and they'll get to tell you the name and probably, you know, sell it for you if they have it. Or you can get another stretchy fabric, but just make sure you make use of a stretchy fabric. So I'll also be making use of this elastic thread. It's called elastic thread because of how it stretches, how elastic it is. Yes, I think it's about 500 Naira or thereabouts. I don't know the exact amount currently. Um, if you could not get the elastic thread, you can get to make use of the tiny elastic. Yes, if you did, if you could not get the elastic thread, you can make use of the tiny elastic so that is that for that and also i'm making use of the emmy gum which is not here but i'll try to insert a picture of the emmy gum on this particular um, video so with this being said we'll dive right into the drafting of this um top and like i stated earlier on please try as much as possible to get a stretchy fabric for making this top i'll be drafting directly on the pattern paper before I get to transfer it to the fabric and I'll be needing one whole pattern paper that is one full pattern paper now there's another method used for drafting this particular style of top um, but that will require me drafting directly on the fabric and it's quite technical and you know <laughs> a bit confusing so I just want to try as much as possible to make this um, drafting very easy to understand so that the reason I'm drafting on the pattern paper and I'm making use of my tape rule and I'm also making use of this tracing wheel if you don't have the tracing wheel not to worry you can make use of a barrel that is no longer writing in place of the tracing wheel also I'm making use of a pen so these are some of the high things I'm making use of for drafting out of this pattern so without further talk, um, let's dive right into the process. So right now, I'll go ahead and fold this pattern paper into two. Remember, this top has an asymmetric neckline, meaning both um, sides of the necklines are not the same. So because of that, for that reason, um, we're going to draft a full pattern, a whole body pattern. So we're going to fold this um, pattern into two. So I'll be folding the pattern into two like this, into two equal parts precisely. So I'll get to fold it into two equal parts like this, as you can see. After folding into two equal parts, I'll get to start drafting. So this side of the pattern that is not open will be serve as the center front. And this side that is open will serve as the side for drafting the side of the pattern on. So the first step is to go ahead and come down from the beginning of the pattern paper by one inch to get my top line or my starting line. So after doing this, I'll go ahead and connect all the dots together to get a straight line. And this line is referred to as a starting line or the top line. Now on this starting line, I'll go ahead and divide my shoulder measurement by 2. So my shoulder measurement is 16 divided by 2 gives me 8 and that is what I've marked out. Next is to mark out the arm O depth. Now to get the arm O depth, you divide your round bust measurement by 6 plus 1.5. So my round bust measurement is 41 divided by 6 plus 1.5 gives me 8.3 and that is what I'm marking out. So here yeah, I'm just marking out the um, shoulder measurements there again so that I'll get a straight line when connecting the arm O depth to the shoulder like this. Next, I'll mark out the chest line and to do that, you divide your round bust measurement by 4. So my round bust measurement is 41 divided by 4 gives me 10.25 and that is what I've marked out here. And I'll connect it straight down 
to this point like this to give me the chest line so this line is referred to as the chest line so next i'm just going to mark out the neck width so the neck width i'm making use of is three inches that is the regular normal neck width three inches and after marking out the neck width next i'm going to create the shoulder slope by coming down from the shoulder here by one inch like this and i'll connect the one inch to the neck width like so to get the shoulder slope or slant next is to draw the arm or curve and to do that i'll get the midpoint from the shoulder slant here to the chest line by placing my tape like this and whatever i get i divide it into two or fold my tape like this to get the midpoint and i'll mark it out and after marking out the midpoint on the midpoint i will come in by 0 0.5 inch so i'm going to connect the shoulder slant to the um, 0 0.5 inch and also to the chest line like this are you saying it after doing this the next step is to mark out the waistline and i'll be making use of my front waist length measurement that is from the shoulder to the waistline and for me it is 17.5 inches and that is what i am marking out here 17.5 and i'll bring in my rule to connect the dot as well to get a straight line like this and this line is referred to as the waistline next is to determine how long you want your top to be so for me i want this particular top to be about 24 inches long so this top is it ranges from 23 inches long or 24 inches long so whichever one you want but for me 24 inches is okay for me so i'll just mark out 24 you can also make use of 23 inches for the length of this top so i'll mark out 24 inches like this you can see the one placing my tape so i mark out 24 inches and i also go ahead and bring in my rule to connect the dots to get a straight line like this and this is referred to as the sh um, top length or the blouse length okay i'll need to explain something to you now to get these gathers here that are from the under bust to the full top length you will need the slash and spread method that is what is shown on the picture now this ruffles here you will need to slash from the underboss to the full top length and then spread it open on your fabric and you know leave a um, few inches in between each spaces but then i want to bypass this particular slash and spread method so what i would get to do is to just add few inches from the full top length so that would you know serve as what will help with the excess um, ruffles or gathers so for that i'll just be adding five inches from the full top length if you don't want much gathers or much ruffles from the underboss to the full top length you can just get to come down by three inches or 3.5 inches to give you minimal foldings from your underboss to your full top length so that is it so for me i'm coming down by five inches and i'll get to connect the dots to get a straight line and i would just refer to this line as the total blouse or top length yeah so now that we have all of this line next step is to start dividing the round measurement by four and marking out so on the waistline i'll divide my round waist measurement by four and mark it out so my round waist measurement is 33 divided by four gives me 8.25 and that is what i've marked out here and i'll connect it to the bust measurement here like this now because the fabric i'm making use of is not stretchy i'll be adding half inch of ease to my bust measurement to my waist measurement and to my hip measurements after marking them out so that my top can be able to enter my body whenever i get to put it on it can be able to you know enter my body easily so i'll just add half inch to the bust measurement here just for ease and i'll also do the same thing on the waist measurement as well add half an inch and I'll connect the waist measurement to the bust measurement like this using my rule. Now, if you could get the stretchy fabric, no need of adding the half an inch is you do not need it at all. You do not need this at all. So on the total um, full blast length line, I'll divide my round hip measurement by four and mark it out here. And before connecting it to the waistline, I'll be adding the half an inch is as well. And I'll go ahead and connect using my rule like this. Now, there's something I did off the camera to avoid a tight arm O, which is I came down from the side by half an inch, that is 0 0.5 inch, and I reconnected it back to the arm O curve like this, as indicated by the thick blue line, as you can see. So whether you're making use of a stretchy fabric or a non-stretchy fabric, you have to do this. You must do this. Um, come down by half an inch from the side and reconnect it back to the arm O. Moving on, it's time to make use of the tracing wheel. And like I stated earlier on, if you don't have the tracing wheel, 
you can make use of a pen that is no longer writing in place of the tracing wheel so i'll go ahead and trace out all the lines so that it gets to show on the other side of the pattern paper so you can see i'm tracing out every details every line that has been marked out on this side i'm tracing it out so once i get to open up this pattern i'll see all the prints on the other side and i'll just use my pen to you know I lighten them, mark them out. But since I'm no longer going to hotter anything on the down part of this pattern, to hasten this drafting up, I'll just go ahead and fold back the pattern and bring in my scissors and just cut out this down part, cut out the side and stop halfway like this because you know on the shoulder we have some little twigs to do this, so we have to leave space for that. So right now, I'll go ahead and trace out what um, the tracing wheel has printed out on the other side like this. So I'll just go ahead and start using my pen to, you know, trace them out like this, trace out the markings like this. You seeing it? So I'll just do that. So if there's any part that you do not understand, just let me know in the comment section and I'll try as much as possible to, you know, explain to you. So I'll just mark out all the lines like this, trace out all the lines rather like this after doing this it's time to work on the shoulders slash sleeves so first you have to determine where you want the off shoulder to be and where you want the one shoulder to be so you just on your pattern indicate the right side of your pattern and indicate the left side of your pattern so for me i want the part that is on the shoulder to be on the right side and i want the off shoulder to be on the left hand side firstly i'm going to work on the part that is on the shoulder that is indicated in the picture displayed on the screen so what i'll do i'll go ahead and extend this slanted shoulder here so i'll place my rule like this in a slanted line in a slanted way and i'll extend this slanted shoulder down like this are you seeing it after extending i'll go ahead and mark out how long i want this part of the sleeve to be and i'm going to place my tape from this point so if you want your sleeve to be exactly of this length displayed on the screen right now you make use of three inches you get but for me i want my sleeve to be of the longer length that is this other picture displayed on the screen right now so i'm going to be making use of four inches yes so i'll mark out four inches which i've already done i'm marking out four inches from this point like this and after marking out four inches next step is to go ahead and bring in my curve row and i'll connect the four inches back to the arm o like this so i'll bring in my curve rule and connect so if you don't have your curve rule you can actually make use of your ends to draw out a near perfect curve like this so i'll go ahead and you know connect the four inches to the arm o here or rather to the bust measurement here so i'll go ahead and connect like this so you can see what i have here now from this slanted end i'll come down by 0 0.25 inch here 0 0.25 inch please take note of that 0 0.25 inch and i'm going to bring in my curve rule to connect this 0 0.25 inch back to the slanted line like this just to you know give me a little curve a very little minimal curve like this so are you seeing it so i'm just trying to get a you know minimal curve a you know nice curve so i'm connecting the 0 0.25 inch back to the slanted line like this now that I have drafted this part of this um, sleeve, I'll go ahead and draft out the left hand side. But before then, I would want to cut out the arm o here like this. Please watch. I'll go ahead and cut this out because I'm done with this uh, right hand side sleeve. So it's time to attend to the off shoulder. Mm -hmm. Let me put it like that to the off shoulder. <laughs> And take note that this previous arm O is no longer needed. This previous one is no longer needed. So for this left hand side, I would need to draft out a sleeve pattern. So I'll go ahead and bring in um, another pattern paper, a smaller pattern paper to draft out a short sleeve pattern. So this is the pattern paper I'm making use of this. So the first step is I'm going to come down from the beginning of the pattern paper by one inch like this to get the top line or the starting line. So after marking this out, I'll go ahead and bring in my rule to connect the dots to get a straight line like so. 
So next is to mark out the carpet line and to get your carpet line, you divide your round base bust measurement by 12 plus 1. So for me, my round bust measurement is 41 divided by 12 plus 1 gives me 4.41 and that is what I'm marking out here. And I'll go ahead and also bring in my rule to connect the dots to get a straight line. So hope you're watching the way I am placing my tape rule. So after marking this out, this is the carpet line. Next is to mark out the length for this short sleeve. So I'm just making the normal length for a short sleeve is nine inches. So I'll just make use of eight inches because we really do not need the length. We just need to draft that a short sleeve. The length does not really matter. So eight inches is okay. So I'll also connect the dots to get a straight line. And this is the sleeve length. Moving on, on the sleeve length line, I'll go ahead and divide my round bicep measurement by 2. So my round bicep measurement is 13 divided by 2 gives me 6.5. That is what I've marked out here. Normally, on the carpet line, you divide your round bust measurement by 6 plus 1.5 and mark it out. But then, since this uh, sleeve pattern is going to be joined to the bodice pattern, there is no need for adding 1.5. So you just divide your round bust measurement by 6 and mark it out on your carpet line. So my round bust measurement is 41 divided by 6 gives me 6.8. So that is what I'll mark out on the carpet line like this. So I'm marking 6.8 inches here like this. And after doing this, I'll connect these two points together like so. Next, I'll connect these measurements on the carpet line. I'll connect it to this end of the top line like so to give me a triangular line like this. Next, I'll get the midpoint of this triangular line by placing my tape from this end to this other hand here. And whatever I get, I'll either divide it by two and mark it out or just fold my tape over like this to get the midpoint. And I'll mark the midpoint out. Now, from that midpoint, I'll go up by half an inch, which is 0 0.5 inch. And I'll go ahead and bring in my curve rule and draw out the sleeve curve like this. So please just watch. So from the top line, I'll go ahead and draw out a curve that is going downward like this. That is passing through the half an inch. Are you seeing it? It's passing through that half an inch mark like this. And then I will turn over my curve and draw out a curve that is facing upward like this. So you can see we have the nice sleeve curve. So now that we have this, I'll go ahead and bring in my scissors and cut out this pattern like this. After cutting out the sleeve, I'll bring in my bodice pattern. So right now it's time to attend to the off shoulder, which is the falling shoulder. So in attending to this, I'm going to bring in the sleeve pattern that I cut out and I'm going to, you know, um, join it to the bodice pattern. So in doing that, let me just indicate. So take note that this is the side of the sleeve and this is the middle part of your sleeve, right? Which is the shoulder part. So in joining this sleeve to this pattern, the shoulder part of this sleeve, which is the middle part of the sleeve, is going to align to the shoulder part of your bodice pattern like this and the side of your sleeve will be on the side of your um, bodice pattern so after joining like this i'll bring in my paper tape and i'll use it to hold it in place so ignore the space between the sleeve and the bodice pattern that space that will be between the um, sleeve and bodice pattern after joining it together ignore ignore it it does not matter so i'll place it like this and i'll bring in my paper tape and i'm going to you know join it like this making sure that the shoulder of the body meets with the shoulder of the sleeve like so and also the side of the sleeve is on the side of the bodies like this and i'm holding this down with my paper tape as you can see so after doing this it's time to draft out the off shoulder so from this neckline on the right side i am going to you know draw out a curve to get to the sleeve here so please just watch so i'm going to be using my curve rule you can actually use your ends to draw out the cuff and i'll be using the curved part of my rule so i'll be placing my rule from the neckline on the right side and it's going to go towards the sleeve on the left side so to know the length of the curve all you have to do is to subtract two inches or 2.5 inches from your full shoulder measurement so my full shoulder measurement is 16 inches so i'm going to subtract 2.5 you can subtract two inches whichever you want to subtract it's okay so 2.5 minus 16 inches gives me 13.5 inches 
so meaning the length of my curve is going to be 13.5 inches i can decide for it to be 14 inches meaning i subtracted two inches from my foot shoulder measurement so anyone i get is no problem so i'm just taking the measurements to make sure that i'm having 13.5 inches as the curve length so after drawing out the curve this is what i have and you can see how beautiful it is so from the left neckline i'm going to measure the distance between the neckline to the curve and here i have 1.5 inches so if you want it a bit deeper you can make yours two inches you get so i'm just going to go ahead and take the measurement of this curve again so you, you can get to see it so here you can see i have 13.5 inches so Anyone you want to subtract, it's fine. You can subtract 2 inches or 2.5 from your full shoulder measurement. It is okay. It is fine. Moving on, it's time to mark out the length for the falling shoulder. That is the half shoulder. So for the length, the basic length to use is 3 inches. And that is what I'm going to be making use of. That 3 inches is the basic length for most of shoulders. So I'll make use of that 3 inches. So I'm marking 3 inches from the curved line, as you can see. And I'll connect that 3 inches back to the arm O. And I'm making use of my curve rule. So I'll go ahead and use the curve side of my curve rule to connect the three inches back to the arm O like this. So I'll curve it back to the arm O like this. So basic off shoulders are three inches in length. So take note of that. So right now, bring in my scissors and I'll cut this out. Cut that shoulder, cut the neckline and also cut out the off shoulder cut out the arm o and cut out the side like this as well so right now my pattern is ready 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 so if you still want some form of gathers on the off shoulder all you have to do is to just create a slash line like this and then use the slash and spread method to get the gathers so if you notice this pattern does not have any form of that that is because this top is a free top so a free top does not need any form of that take note of that as well <laughs> so right now for the allowances i would leave um one inch at the m here i'll leave one inch at the m here um one inch here on the side same as well one inch here on the side same now to make sewing this top together very easy for you and to give you a neater version of this top i would advise you make use of a bias to turn the sleeve m and also to turn the neckline so if you're doing this you will leave half an inch allowance on the sleeve m's on the shoulders and also on the neckline but for me i could not get a color of bias that you know matches with my fabric so i had to you know conclude on either making use of two inches or one inches for my sleeve m allowance and on the shoulder i left half an inch and then on the sleeve m i later decided to just make use of um i was still thinking here so i just later decided to put either two inches or one inches for the sleeve m allowance which i later ended which i what have i said <laughs> which i ended up making use of one inch for the sleeve m allowance simply because i could not get a bias so for the neckline i also left half an inch allowance here on the neckline so half an inch allowance on the neckline and also on the shoulder here half an inch allowance here as well then at the sleeve m here as well since i have not concluded i also wrote two inches or one inches um aiming allowance get so that's that for that so right now go ahead and bring in my fabric so i'll go ahead and place the fabric wide open i'll spread it out like this now if you're making use of fabrics that has prints so you would need to you know obviously um spread the right side facing you the right side of the fabric should be facing you so i'll just indicate the wrong side of this fabric because both sides of my fabric are the same so on the right side of the fabric i'll place my pattern like this after placing it like so i'm going to go ahead and use my pin to hold it in place so place your fabric on the right side place oh my god place your pattern on the right side of your fabric and hold it in place with your pin so after holding it in place with my pins like this i'll go ahead and mark out all the allowances around it and once i've done that i'll come back and you know um show you what i've marked out before cutting out this fabric so let me go ahead and do that off the camera and i'll bring it back to you know show you so this is it and as you can see at the m i left one inch allowance at the side one inch at the sleeve m year one inch at the shoulder half inch neckline half inch shoulder half inch uh m year one inch on the side one inch and right now i'll go ahead and cut this out like this like this like this 
and when i get to where the sleeve m stops i'm just going to give it a little snip so i can be able to know where the m of my sleeves stops at so i'll just cut this out cut this out after cutting out the front fabric i'll go ahead and spread out the fabric for the back pattern and as you can see i spread it out already and i've indicated the wrong side of this um fabric so when placing the front fabric on it because i'm going to use the front fabric to cut out the back fabric as well that is the back pattern as well so when placing it i'll make sure that the wrong side of the front fa uh, fabric is facing the wrong side of the back fabric like this are you saying it i'll place it like so i hope you don't understand so i'll go ahead and just spread this out nicely like this and i'll also use my pin to hold it in place and once i've used my pins to hold it in place i'll go ahead and cut out the back fabric as well that is the back pattern as well like this so you can see i am cutting 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 <laughs> and i'll make sure i snip wherever the arm all stops so that it will be easier for me when i start sewing all of this together so after doing this i'll go ahead and take out the pattern paper because it's time to start sewing the top together so i'll go ahead and take out the pattern paper so i'll just before taking it out i'll also snip where the um, one inch for the aiming allowance at the done part where it stops i'll also go ahead and just extend the line out and give it a little snip like this so that's also easier for me whenever i'm turning the aim of the stop so now that i have this i'll go ahead and now take out the pattern so this is what i have as you can see so the next step moving on is to bring out one of the patterns so whatever i'm doing to one of the pattern is what i also do to the other pattern as well so now if you're making use of a bias you can go ahead and use the bias to turn the sleeve m and also use it to turn the neckline as at this point but since i'm not making use of a bias i will have to cut out an interface for the neckline so for the interface i made use of 2.5 inches here and also on the other side 2.5 inches which i later found out was too long so when you're marking yours out make use of one inches on both side of the shoulder like this one inch on both side and then connect the one inch to the other one inch instead of the 2.5 that i made use of it was too long so to avoid that make use of one inch for your interface the length of your interface and connect like this using a curve like so so after doing this i'll go ahead and bring in my scissors and you know cut out the interface like this so now that i've cut it out for the allowance i'll just leave half an inch all round so i'll go ahead and fold my fabric into two like this to cut out the interface and i'll bring in the interface and place it like this and then i'll use my pin to also hold it down i'll use my pin to hold it down as well to hold it in place rather and after holding it in place i'll also bring a uh, mark out the allowance round and then i'll go ahead and cut this out so here i have my interface cut out and as you can see i have half an inch allowance all round so i'll go ahead and take out the pattern paper so for the interface i have two one for the front pattern that is the front fabric and the other interface for the back pattern so yeah i'm just indicating the side that is going to be on the off shoulder that is that falling shoulder so the next step is to go ahead and turn the m of this interface which is this curved part um you go ahead and turn it with your bias if you don't have a bias you can just fold in half an inch twice at the m and run a stitch through it so i'll go ahead and do that on both interface and i'll come back and show you so right now i have one of my fabric one of my pattern all laid out and i'll bring in the interface whatever i'm doing i'm going to do it to the other pattern as well so you can see i have aimed the down of this interface although i've not ironed but make sure you iron after every step so in placing it i'll make sure that the right side of the interface is facing the right side of the fabric and i'll go ahead and place it on the neckline and i'll run a stitch through it using half an inch allowance so i'll go ahead and close up the neckline and once i'm done doing that i'll come back and show you so guys this is it i have stitched down the interface to the neckline as you can see so right now it's time to you know close up the shoulders so in closing up the shoulders i'm going to bring in the other pattern that's the other fabric and in placing it i'll make sure that the right side of the fabrics are facing each other that is the right side of the uh, front fabric should lie should be facing the right side of the back fabric and i'll place it like this are you seeing it 
so in closing up the shoulders there are several ways to two ways to close up um, a shoulder um the first step is you bring in the two shoulders together and you flip one of the interface to the other side and you go ahead and run a stitch tree using half an inch allowance so that method is quite complex so the simpler method is i'll place the shoulders together making sure that the shoulder joining here is also lined directly on the shoulder journey of the other one like this and then making sure that the interface is on the interface and the fabric is on the fabric and i'll go ahead and close it up using half an inch so i'll do the same thing on the other side as well so here we have it i have closed up the shoulders as you can see so this is what i have so to avoid here being bulky you can go ahead and trim off a little bit of it make sure it doesn't get to the stitch um you know it doesn't cut open the stitch it doesn't get close to the stitch maybe 0.25 inch away from the stitch and to keep the interface in place you will have to use the amy gum so yeah i'll just go ahead and cut out a little bit from the amy gum and i'll place it like this in between the fabric and the interface and one of the interface like this and i'll go ahead and place it like this and iron so i also do the same thing on the other fabric as well this way when i'm putting on the top the interface does not disturb me so right now it's time to turn the m of this top so i'll go ahead and spread it wide open like this and on the wrong side at the m i'll turn over half an inch twice like this and then i'll run a stitch through it to the other end and i'll repeat the same thing on the other fabric as well right here i have marked one inch allowance at the sleeve m here so that to be easier for me when i am turning the m of the sleeve so right now it's time to close up the side seam and to do that from this point of where the arm was stopped that is where i you know snip to lead you i will run a stitch down from this point to the m using one inch sewing allowance and i'll do the same thing on the other side seam as well so after doing that i'll go ahead and also aim the um sleeve m as well i will aim it round as well so this is it i have done that so at this point it is time to now bring in the elastic thread so this is where the elastic thread comes into play so for the elastic thread i'll be needing my ruler so i will have to reel the elastic thread round the ruler like this and this will be under the machine of course and a normal thread will be at the top of the sewing machine so if you don't have the elastic thread you can make use of the normal regular tiny elastic so in you know sewing these you will need to mark out your underbust line so for me from my shoulder to my underbust is 15 inches and that is what i'm marking out on the sides here as you can see so it is from this underbust line here to the end that i'm going to run the stitch through with the elastic thread or that i'm going to put the tiny elastic whichever you're going to use no problem but i feel using the elastic thread is way better for this so in cutting out the tiny elastic just measure from your underbust line to the m and then whatever you get you subtract three inches from it and you use it to cut out the tiny elastic so i'm just going to cut out a little bit from my tiny elastic just to show you how to sew it in so you go ahead and turn your top to the wrong side like this turn the top to the wrong side like this and you're going to open up the um the seam like this open up the same allowance and then you mark out the underbust line obviously place your tape on the nape of the shoulder here and mark out the underbust line that is from your shoulder to the underbust line you mark it out and then from that point that you've marked out you're going to open up the seam and stitch the um, tiny elastic on the center of the steam seam that is <laughs> you're going to stitch down the elastic like this in between the opened um seam allowance so that is that for that so for me i made use of an elastic thread and this is what i have that is i stitched from the underbust line to the m you get so that's why you have to mark out your underbust line so you can see i ran five stitches on it like this you can see what i have here so i ran one stitch on the seam that is on the seam joining and two stitch on both sides like this i'm going to show you so this is the seam journey i run run one stitch in the middle of it and then on this other side once you turn the seam over you have two stitch line here and two stitch line here so make sure that the stitch lines are very close to each other and to make your job neater you will have to go ahead and weave the edges of your seams you have to go ahead and weave it and before you weave you go ahead and cut about half an inch from the end here of your um seam allowance at the end you cut 
the same allowance at the end here just to make sure it doesn't show when you're putting on the top and then you go ahead and weave the edges of the seam just to make it look at look neater so you can see me stretching it you can see how beautiful it is looking and i repeated this on the other side as well so if you enjoyed this video and if you found this video helpful <laughs> please do what to eat on that subscribe button and also give this video a thumbs up so this is the top on me and you can see how beautiful it is looking so you can actually make a pants with this or make a short with this or even a pleated skirt i think a pleated skirt will also look good on this i don't know i think so so you can make anything you want to make with this to make it a two-piece outfit or you can even get to make this as a gown yes you just have to be um, oh my goodness you just have to be creative so guys this is it this is it this is it and i am in love with this particular top because it is something i can be yeah, put on with jean i can put on with you know rock with anything so guys see you on my other videos bye love ya Bye.